What we got going? Okay. okay. Who all do we have here? We have Earl and we have Ryan. Yep. Sure, to have three if we. Yep, we need to have three. Oops. Yeah, mine. Okay. So. I guess where to begin, we'll call the meeting to order. It is 5 p.m. Yeah. And um, Kyle is recording for us, correct? Yes, so yeah. it's recording. Um, the shellfish warden is called in sick today, so he's not able to come and give a report. Um, but I don't think there were any summons or anything been issued over the last maybe two years. And that was that's still Kevin, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Kevin and Lee are both. Um, hi, Dave. You want to sign in over here? Oh. Um, you're probably near the bottom under the commercial license holders or something. Yep. I don't know. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Somebody I do. Right. So, what did the fire department leave for? What? And the sirens were. Oh, I don't they know. They went. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have their no. radio thing. So, um, okay. So, as far as the warden update, yeah, Kevin usually, usually is able to come, but he's sick today, and Lee had another meeting he had to attend to, so they weren't able to come. Okay, so I guess next is Heidi. Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Heidi Layton. I'm the DMR area biologist for Eastern Maine. Um, and I'm just here. I don't have uh, too much to update uh, for you right now. It's pretty quiet in the winter time, but um, just wanted to note that you are still outstanding your 2020 annual review report and uh, you should have received a letter that the annual review for 2021 is due on April 1st of this year. Um, so those two items are high priority uh, because annual review is required uh, is a required report annually um, in order to keep your program. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Um, as a note for the 2021 report, um, our treasurer and finance director, Jake Wright, is going to be giving probably you a call because um, he has some issues. That's what's holding me up is I, I am not able to get some expenditure um, numbers for the budget report. So uh, yeah. he, he's going to give you a call. Yep, that's fine. Okay. And so that brings me to, I guess, the the next item um, as a committee. Someone, and I guess we select a chair and a vice chair, but I don't think we have a quorum here. We only have two members and we have Dave Dunton, which I believe he could be appointed to the committee. There's nothing in the um, ordinance or anything that says a committee member has to reside in town. So if you guys want to consider, you know, and if Dave wants to um, be on the committee, I think we could do that. Um, but you need to select a chair and a vice chair. And, um, and then the committee needs to, I guess, work with me on completing the report so that we can get that submitted to DMR. And last year we didn't have a chair of a vice chair because we haven't really met since May of 2019. So. Did, did we get any progress? I know you'd sent out, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a letter with people nominating other people. Yeah. Is, did, was there any progress made with that? Uh, it was really, Brian, your response, um, which I think you said then, 
Um, was your response, and Earl, you came in and, and just kind of had a question about where we were going with it, but. Um, yeah, I think, I can't remember that far back. It was either um, Rusty and Ben or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, Rusty and Taylor or, and or Ben. Um, so I never heard back from either one of them if they were interested in doing it and they're also not here tonight. No. So they probably, I mean, um, I guess my question is if there's not enough interest in a committee and the committee people to do the work, are we going to continue with this or are we going to turn it back over to DMR? Right. I, I personally would like to try to keep going with it instead of turning it over um, to the state. Uh, but <clears throat> it would be nice to hear in from the rest of everyone else. And I know um, I just spoke to Rusty earlier and I think he was going to be hopping in on the call. Yes, uh, hop in. Oh, there he is. Um, so, yep, I got you. I can hear you. Um, so that that being said, I don't know if if everyone got the letters in the mail because I know it was kind of short notice from when I received it in the mail versus when the meeting was. Um, yeah, it was about a week. Yeah. So, so I, I know. I know how sometimes things goes with the mail and people scheduling, especially with COVID and all that stuff nowadays. Um, as you can tell, I, I was, I was planning on coming to the meeting tonight, but I'm sitting in a vehicle right now because one of my daughters had a, a doctor's appointment that we couldn't reschedule. So it was kind of short notice for the, the clan meeting on my end, but I, at least I'm able to zoom in. Whereas I'm sure maybe some other committee members might not be able to. Okay, so that's part of what I guess we'll do. We now do have a quorum with Rusty, so we can vote on things. Um, so I guess the first thing that we can vote on is to nominate a chair and vote. So Rusty, uh, uh, your name has been put forth as a chair. Are you willing to do that? Is there any other names put forth? No, the two names that came up as possibilities for chair and vice chair were you and Ben Hamer. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd be willing to do it. Okay, so then do you want to make a motion? Yeah, a motion. Okay. Rusty, the chair. I'll say Rusty's a good choice. Okay. All right. Um, so it's been. First, is there a second? I second it. Okay. All right, and you want to vote? I need three voters. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. And you vote yes? Yes. Okay. Okay. And so what about vice chair? I, I would be interested in doing that if anybody else was interested in nominating me, I suppose. You want to nominate him? Yeah, I'll nominate. Okay, so. Who's he? Brian Silverman. Okay. <laughs> Is there a second? Yeah, I'd second it. Okay. All right, and so a vote? Yes. One, two, yes, I'm in favor. All right, three to, oh, okay, great. So congratulations um, on the chair, Rusty, and on the vice chair, Brian. Great, okay. So I guess the next item, which was to determine if the committee wanted to continue to support the ordinance, and it sounds like you guys do, <clears throat> so then I guess we'll work together on uh, setting up when the next meeting is so I can get appropriate notice out to people. And we have the, um, as Heidi said, the annual report is due 4-1. So I would suggest <clears throat> that our next meeting be in March. 
Okay. And is that annual report going to be what's based is what's going to be the requirements to hold us to determine um, to for us to you know uh, continue to hold our ordinance? What's the state going to require from us? Um, I have past reports, and um, I do have your your Gmail account. I can Gmail you email you over a couple of reports as an example of what we've done. And last year, I just basically kept it as what it was before because you guys hadn't had any meetings. So, um, so basically, they, they want that report basically by four one, and that yes. would satisfy what we're to hold the ordinance. Yes, and um, and it take probably about fifteen twenty minutes for you to sit down with me and for us to complete it. Okay. Okay. Um, so is there, when in March would you like to meet? You want to keep it on Thursdays at five? That works. Yeah, that works for me. Earlier in March, the better, like the, the further towards April, it gets a little more shaky. My, my personal schedule gets. Okay. So I know we have a town meeting on the eighth, which is, is that a Tuesday? I don't have a calendar in front of me. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe the Thursday that week, which might be the 10th or the 11th. Yeah, something like that probably would work just for me at this point. Yeah I, yeah, I agree. Earlier in the March, the better. OK, that's the 10th. And that's my birthday. So you can all bring me a lobster. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How about some clams? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be easier to find a lobster than a clam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. I will check the town's calendar and um, email. Let's see. So I have Rusty's email, Brian's email. Uh, do you have an email, Earl? No. No. Okay. Then I can call you. Yeah. Okay. Are, are then, you gonna Are you gonna send out email notices as well for the meetings? Yeah, I will. I will. I only okay. have like two emails though. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's a sustainability committee meeting that night at 430. So um, I'll check, I guess I'll check the week before, which would probably be the third. The week before the 10th. We'll check with you. If you would, I'll look check at the 17th. Oh, no, I was looking at March 10th. March 10th. Right. So work Okay, then what about March 3rd? March 3rd looks clear. Okay, so the next meeting will be March 3rd. March 3rd? Yes. Five o'clock? At 5 p.m. <laughs> Sounds and good. I'll out an email to Rusty and Brian. They're the only two emails I have. And Heidi. Um, so Rusty, if you want to give me items that you want on an agenda, then I can do that. Uh, we probably want to think about the allocations because we're the Board of Selectmen is just approved to extend the licenses that were sold in 2019 to present. So we probably want to do, you know, updated allocations. We can okay. just look at we had done in the past, and if that looks good to you, we can just move to continue. Okay. And so, and then we'll also look at the um, the report that's due. And yeah. Um, and so, is there anything else that you guys want to discuss tonight? Um, I guess the the only thing I was gonna bring up or suggest is uh, what you were talking about the allocations. Um, is there I guess, is there any reason why um, we see that um, there's no need for people to be purchasing uh, licenses this year or previous years? Um, I think the reason was that the Shellfish Committee had not met um, and to put forth the allocation. So the Board of Selectmen just went ahead and approved to um, extend the expiration date on the 
licenses that have been sold and as people come in because I still have spaces available to sell licenses right um, from the previous allocation so if somebody came in and wanted to buy one I did sell it to them yeah. okay okay so if we get the allocations figured out for this year then we'll we'll still um we'll be making payments ourselves for the this current years yes starting in july 1st okay so whatever license you have now is good until june 30th okay okay and and, and currently what are what are the uh, fees for the licenses for resident and non-resident okay so for commercial resident they're 150 for commercial non-resident there's one dave has that and it's 300 i believe i have them in my book and then for recreational resident is 30 and non-resident is 50. Have, have we sold any uh, recreational resident or non-resident yeah we do sell those um let us see so i have one two three four it's like five seven eight nine resident licenses sold um, for recreational and or non-resident recreational licenses. Sorry. And and how? Um, I guess it will be discussed between you and Rusty once we have the allocations meeting. Is um, have we? Is there any costs from the committee to the town for the warden? Um, yeah, that's part of what Jake needs to um, clarify, and he's going to probably call Heidi um, about that, because uh, when I asked him for the figures for the report, he said he didn't think that they had been consistently, what do you want to say, reported or calculated or, or whatever, how they were derived, so he wants to talk to CMR about that. So that going forward we're consistent on that but it was my understanding that the monies we raised from selling licenses were funding the warden um, things and then if we had any projects like i don't know seating or anything right. that maybe funding would come from that pot as well okay um and i i know you had mentioned lee and Kevin were either busy or sick, but uh, did they give any input or say anything about how this previous season or the season was before at all, or if they well, felt that they were able to get out as much? They didn't, um, Lee didn't actually give me anything to report on, although I did ask him about summons, like over the last few years, if there were any summonses issued. And he said, no, the only summons that were issued were early in 2017. So since that, they haven't issued any summons. Um, but I can't report on their activity, like how frequently they check or, or anything. Okay. Uh, so we'll, well, you know, two items I always put on every agenda would be a warden's report and the state information or update. So we'll have someone, I'll tell Lee whether it's him or Kevin or Adam, I guess Adam down in the marina is also a shellfish warden. That somebody he is? I believe so, yes. Okay, yeah, that was gonna bring me to my, to my other question was if, um, depending on how we felt things were going with Kevin and Lee being, you know, do, obviously doing a great job and the best that they can, but. Um, if they're not able to get out on the water as much, whereas now that Adam's the um, assistant hire master, and I believe they've also hired another assistant for the assistant. Well, they have an office manager, I okay. believe, and they have um, deputy harbor master, which is Adam, and then they okay. have John harbor master. Okay, that would that would be great if we could 
I guess, find out if Adam definitely is. Um, Cause I, I was just going to make a suggestion if we talked about being able to make him one or get him to be one so that we do have some patrolling by not only by land, but by sea as well. Um, because I know, I, I know speaking with, I speak with him in the past and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, they've definitely been more active on the water now with having all the help in the office and the new, I guess, like you said, the new office manager to help alleviate a lot of the paperwork on them so they can get out more. Okay. Yeah. I have made a note. I will contact John and find out where they stand with that. Um, and I guess the only other thing I, I was going to say is if, uh, by happenstance, if Lee or Kevin were, aren't able to make it to our next meeting for either plans or for unforeseen circumstances or sicknesses or anything like that, is it possible to get some sort of, uh, just like a little report or an update from them that they could email or send to you so that we know what's going on? Sure. I will do that. Yeah, I did when I got the email today that Kevin was had called in sick. I did ask Lee if he was coming to the meeting instead and if he had anything to report. And he just said that he had another commitment for tonight so he couldn't attend and he didn't give me any information about okay. anything else. No, I, I, I understand. I figured it, like I said, I think it was, it was about a week since I got the letter to the meeting. So I'm sure a lot of people had other plans. Yeah. Okay. All right. So is there anything else? Um, I, I can't think of anything else. Do you have anything, Rusty? No, at this point. Okay, great. Well, thank you all for coming and I'm glad we had a quorum. And um, did you guys want to um, consider putting Dave forward for the committee or no? I don't know. It's yeah. up to you. Yeah, did you say it was the March 4th or 3rd? Which day do you say it worked? Um, March 3rd. Um, and if you if you want me to, I can have him fill out the application if he's interested, and we can put it to the selectmen. Uh, their next meeting is on Tuesday, so I can get that on the agenda um, for them to appoint him to the committee if everybody wants to just go that way. What I, I'm sorry, I, I got half the conversation. What are we talking about? If you want to, if Dave wants to, and, and you all agree to appoint him to the shellfish committee, then I have to have an application completed um, by Dave, which would take about not even five minutes, um, and then submit it to the Board of Selectmen to be formally appointed to the shellfish committee. Oh, okay. I see what we're talking about. Okay. Um... How many present committee members do you have? I believe there's five, but only about three or four are active. Like Victor stepped down, and um, I'm sorry, what's your presently a committee member at all? Well, I have Tom Falk and Brent Ben Hamer. Earl, Brian, and Rusty are all committee members. Presently, Victor is no longer on the committee. Right, he stepped down. But I did include him in the mailing in case something came up and he wanted to come back. Um, well, it might, come in, it might come in handy in general to have me on the committee, basically, as somebody to fill in if nobody can come to meetings. I usually try to. Come yeah, to I think you're usually at all the meetings. So that might come in very handy someday to have me accidentally show up. Okay. All right.
So if you want to stay afterwards, I'll give you the form and then I can submit it to the agenda for the well, meeting. I can mail it in to you. Well, I have to have it for the agenda. The agenda goes out tomorrow. So, but it, it won't take but a couple minutes to fill it out. Okay. Yep. So we need to, I guess, a motion for Dave to join the committee in a second and a vote. I'm going to make a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. So Earl moves to put Dave forward as a committee member. Is there a second? Ryan Rusty. Awesome. Yep. Brian's driving. Oh. Okay. Well, Rusty? This is a motion for David to be a committee member. Yes. And not something out people from out of uh, town do. Yeah, I did not see anything in the ordinance um, saying that non residents could be could not be a member. Yeah, I'll but second it. I would second it. All right, let's take a vote. Two. Rusty, you vote aye. Yes. Okay. And then I'll just say that Brian's abstained because he's not connected. So two out of three is a majority. And uh, I guess we will have Dave fill out the form. Okay. So if there's no other business, then I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay. So oh, can can you hear can you hear me there, Claire? Oh, now I can hear you. Yes, we took oh, a vote. Did you want sorry. to vote? Sorry David? about that. Sorry about that. I lost you. I I was just saying I was there was another thing I wanted to to bring up. I guess. Okay. Well, did you want um, to vote, <clears throat> David? No, no, thank you. Okay. Um. I, I suppose the only other thing I was gonna um, suggest is uh, if people, is there, a, do we have something, an ordinance or anything saying for any of the uh, committee members, if how many meetings they need to attend or um, in order to stay on the committee? Yeah, um, the ordinance does say that you need to attend I think you're not supposed to miss more than um, 19, right? The devil with that. <laughs> Did they dismiss that? Um, the, the pandemic? Just looking here. It says committee members shall make every effort to attend to regularly attend committee meetings, any committee member who misses more than two consecutive unexcused absences shall lose their seat on the committee. So, okay. okay. Have a reason if you want to stay, can't make it right. Well, if you call mm -hmm. and you're excused, then, right. then and that one doesn't have, count. We'll cover it. Okay, so, um, but again, it doesn't say anything about resident versus non-resident. No. Okay. Okay. No, that's perfect. I, I appreciate that. Sure. I guess the only other suggestion I'd make is that if we put out saying that we're going to triple the uh, license fees for the committee members, that maybe they'll end up showing up next time. 
that's up to you. <laughs> um, no, but other than that, I I don't have any other further business. So I I motion to adjourn if anyone else has anything. Okay. Right, I'll second. Think, okay, we're adjourned. All right. Well, thank you very much, Claire. Thanks, Heidi, and thanks, Rusty and Ed. Thank you. Yes, thanks for your time, uh, bringing us together. And I'm sure we'll be talking in the future. Say thank you to David. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi.